sorry. So we're going to talk about getting help on Linux. And hopefully after this, you will see just the enormous amount of resources that you have to get help on your Linux journey, right? So we're going to start with kind of the built-in help that's here. And the built-in help is called MAN or the manual. And that's what MAN is short for. It's short for the manual. And there is a manual for nearly every command that we're interacting with on the terminal or on the shell. The way in which we access this manual is typing man, and then the command that we want to get more information about, right? So for instance, if I wanted to look at the manual for the ls command, this is what I would type. I'd hit enter, and it's broken down into different sections. Every manual has these same sections within it. And sometimes it can be a little overwhelming and sometimes people find the, the manual a little difficult to understand, but hopefully we'll be able to explain it and break it down to you so that it will be understandable, the different parts of it. Okay. The first thing you usually get is uh, the name is one section. And so it gives you LS and then it gives you kind of a short description of what it does. It lists directory contents. Okay, yeah, it does. It lists what files and folders you have. Now, if you want a longer description of really what that is, there's the description section right here. And it gives you kind of a longer description. Sometimes there's a few paragraphs sometimes on it. Again, lists information about files, the current directory by default, okay? It sorts the entries alphabetically if none. Um, nor sort specified. So anyway, they're giving some other specifics here. So what it's saying is, is if by default you just type ls, it's just going to show you what's in your current directory. And it's going to sort the, the entries alphabetically. Now you can change that, right? And we've done that before, right? Um, now, I'll go further on, but let's go back here to synopsis. What synopsis is, is it's giving you the syntax of that command, like how to use the command. So for instance, it has ls, and then it says, oh, there's an option, and then there's a file, which is really just a path to a file, okay? Now, if it is in square brackets, like it is here, that means it is optional. That means you can just type the lx, ls command by itself and you don't have to put an option and you don't have to put a path and we've done that before right like we just typed ls by itself and it worked or we typed ls and then a location or a path and then we saw what was in that location or path right but we didn't put i don't know if we used an option yet at all right so it just means you can use these interact if they have a square bracket around them okay well, what are the options that we can use and what do the options do that it's talking about? Well, the options are listed right here. Usually it is like a dash with a single letter or it can be a whole word. And if it's a whole word, usually it's two dashes. And so here for this example, with the A, a dash A, and a dash dash all is the same thing and will produce the same result. So what, what do I mean by that? So where I have LS here for your option, you can put dash A and it will display your files a little bit differently than when you just type LS by itself. And it explains how it does. It says, do not ignore entries starting with a dot. Well, I don't, I still don't get it. Well, let me take a look here. Get in the terminal here. I'm gonna go into my temp just cause there's fewer files there. And I'm gonna type ls, okay? That's what we're used to, right? Well, now let me do ls dash a. Oh, now we get these. Now let me try something else here. I'm gonna do touch. Hidden file, okay? And I'm going to see if it's there, ls. Oh, where's this hidden file? Oh, it must be hidden. But look at it starts with a dot. If you want to hide a file, you put a dot in front of it with Linux. Watch. So now if I do ls-a, 
Oh, there it is. Now I can see it. So that's what this is talking about. If you use the dash A, do not ignore entries starting with a dot. So if a file starts with a dot, normally it's ignored, right? There's no file that starts with a dot there. But when you put the A, it shows you this hidden file. Now, some of your questions might be, well, why would you name a file with a dot in front of it? Well, usually files with a dot are configuration files and files you don't want to change. Or maybe you do want to change them, which we're going to do in week four or five. That's how you change your command prompt and things like that, because there's a bash RC file that we want to change, but it's hidden. And the only way you can see it is with the A option with LS. Let's look at some other options that we can do. Oh, so here we used LS, we added the A option, but what about adding a file? And really when it's talking about a file, it's just talking about a path. So we can use an absolute or a relative path. So I can use LS-A and I can use a relative path like play and there's obviously nothing in there. Or I can do um, LS user bin, whoops. Now, let me do my desktop or something like that. I can do home. I can do dash A. And remember my shortcut for home, tilde. Ooh, look at that. So I see all these configuration files that start with a dot that's in my home directory, right? As opposed to if I get rid of that A, I don't see any of those dot files, right? So this is my location or my path, right? I can do ls-a, and you can use a relative path like this, documents. That's what the A does. So that's what this is telling you here. Oh, but look at, there's everything else. Um, do not, now notice when I did this, it does this dot and this dot dot, all that means is dot means this location and the dot dot just means the location up above if I wanna go up a folder. Um, so if you don't want those, you can use a capital A, but you still want to see the hidden folders. So for instance, there's my hidden, but I still get these I still get the hidden folder, but I don't get this. It's just like different views of the ls command, right? And look at how many different views there. I mean, look at boom, boom, dash d, dash f, dash g, dash eight. I mean, it just like goes on and on. You have tons and tons of options. And you know what? You don't have to memorize all of this stuff. I, I haven't memorized all of this stuff. I've been using Linux for 20 years and you're like, what does um, dash F with the LS option? I, go, I don't know. Let me look it up. <laughs> it's right there. Um, dash X, right? List them by lines instead of columns. I mean, list sort it alphabetically by entry, ex by the extension, right? So by like JPEG or by doc or by whatever, you know, um, you can list them by time, sort them by time. The newest go first. Um, reverse sorting order. I mean, they're just different options that you have to use with the ls command and that's so this is the manual for the ls command and as you can see there's lots of different ways in which to use the ls command we we're probably just going to learn the a and the l command because the l command's pretty or the l option right here long list let me show and you the one yeah go can ahead you, can you use um two different types of options on the same line Yes, that's a good. Yes, that's that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So I will demonstrate that here. So here I just use the dash L option, right? And this listed long lists, which means it gives me more information about the file, right? It gives me who owns the file. It gives me some of this weird stuff here, which is permissions, read, write, execute, which um, you'll get in Linux too. Um, it gives you kind of a size of the file, the last time it was touched and things like that. Now, but guess what it doesn't show? It doesn't show me this hidden file. So it was asked, what if I want long list and I want to see all the hidden files? 
So we can do this two ways. You can do this. You can just do it like that if you want to. And I can see my hidden file now. There's nothing in it, right? So it's zero, right? it's big. Or this is kind of the long way of doing it. You can just combine them if you want by just putting them together like that if you want. And it will do the same thing. So I have the L option and the capital A option. And I can now display my files that way if you want to combine. Yeah, because you may want to sort it and show hidden files and do the long list, right? Or something like that, any combination of things. But the manual here tells you what all those options are. I think there's a question in the homework that says, hey, list the options for the ls command. Just list three or four. I don't need the whole list, okay? <laughs> Just be aware. Some students get frustrated. I have to type all this out or they copy and paste it out. Just give me three or four. I just want to know that you know how to look this up. Okay. Now, how this works is by default, this you're going into kind of like a text reader or like an ebook type of thing on the terminal. Um, when you open up the manual, you can hit the space bar and you can scroll down a whole page. And you can hit the B key to go back up a page. You can always hit the arrow key down to go line by line down or the arrow key up to go up by line like that. As it says down here at the bottom, you can push H for help for how to navigate it a little bit better. It um, gives you lots and lots of options that you can look through here. Um, and then it obviously says Q when you're done. So I'll hit Q to get back out. And then if you wanna get out of this again, you can hit Q and it returns you back to the command line, okay? So let's look at another manual page, date. So this is the date command. What does the date command do? It gives us the date and time, right? But are there other ways we can use the date command? Let's see. I know it says man date, yeah. All right, so again, it gives you a little description, gives you a longer description, has the same parts as all the manuals are laid out the same way. Now, this one is really interesting, right? Everything is in square brackets, which means all this stuff is optional, right? Because we can just type the date command by itself and it will work. Everything else is optional, but we have lots of different options that we can use with it. And then what it has is this plus format option. Um, well, yeah, option for it. And um, so let's see what that is. So this is just the option portion of it, this dash D, this dash F. But if we want to format it, it takes a plus and then something else. So let's look at that. If we look down here, see, so down here starts the format part of it, the format controls. So here we have, if we do a, um, what is that, percentage sign A, it will give us the day of the week, but abbreviated, right? Just sun. So let's go back here. Let me look at that. So if I just do date by itself, okay. Now, if I do date, now if I look up here at the top, notice it has a plus, and then you have to put the format that you want it in. So I'm gonna put a plus, and then I'm gonna put this format in, and let's see what happens. Plus, oops. Format A just gives me Monday. Now oh, let's go back and see what else we can do. What if we do, what if we want the, the month, the full month? Well, that is a percentage sign B. Now, can we do both? Yeah, so we can do percentage sign B. Now, I can add a space there. Oops, you have to put something in there, I guess. You have to put like a type of separator you can do that i think you can put question marks in there yeah if you want to run them together for whatever reason <laughs> do that then you can separate it How, whatever format as you guys can see um, then you can add the day if you want anyway you can do it with slashes so it shows the date you know kind of like we see here in america right whether it's month slash day slash year um, anyway, lots of different ways.
to display the date and time. Lots and lots of options. And this is the manual that teaches you how to do that. Okay, let's look at something that's not optional, like the copy command. Let's see if there's a manual for that. Oh, look at this. So here's the CP command, copy files and directories, right? We know that. And it says copy, and then there's some options that are optional, right? Because they have square bracket. But then look at here, source and destination is not in square brackets. Because with the copy command, you have to have a desk source and a destination, right? What are you going to copy? Where are you going to copy it to? Which is a path, right? So you have to have a source and you have to have a destination for the copy to command to work. It will not work by itself because it has no idea what it needs to copy and where it needs to copy to. So this manual, if you don't see square brackets around it, no tells you exactly what it is, right? Copy a source to a destination or multiple sources to a destination, right? But there's options you can use with it too, right? With the copy command. The most common one I use is probably the R, recursive, which means if you're copying directories with directories in them, with more directories or more directories in them, it'll copy everything inside it as well. Um, anyway, those are man pages. Okay. You'll have some activities as part of your uh, lab to work through and understand some of those man pages. Okay. They're called man pages by short, but they're manuals. Um, anyway, now the next best thing to do if you're stuck is Google, right? Like there is tons and tons and tons and tons of information online. Let me see, Linux, absolute and relative paths. Explain or something, I don't know, I don't get it. Oh, here's one, here's one. What is an absolute and relative path? The difference between absolute and relative path. Here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Pick one. If you don't like it, pick another one. It gives you some examples. Boom. Like Linux, like start it out with Linux or Bash. You can use either. Bash works too. Bash. How to use the MKDIR command. Oh, look at this. Yeah, how to use, yeah. I must misspelled something. Boom. Instructions, 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 instru pages, eight useful MK commands and examples. Wow, I really want to see examples of the MK R command. Here we go. Oh, this is so much better than what my instructor's telling me. This makes so much more sense. Now I get it because I didn't understand when he was talking about it, right? Yeah. So, boom, look at it. It's giving you. Some other, oh, look at, there's a D option for the LS command. Hmm, wonder what that does. I know, but, you know, oh, there's a P option for the MKDIR command, yeah. So Google it, man, it's there, guys. There are so, go like, well, I don't like reading. <laughs> I'm not good at that. We'll go to YouTube then. Like YouTube has tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of examples of people showing you how to do it in all different types of ways. Ooh, that's loud. So loud. Let me knock this down. There you go. Go to YouTube. Um, type in, let's see, Linux links. Explained, yes, explain links to me because I have to do this homework and my structure didn't make any sense. Look at this. This guy's pretty good. I've been listening to this guy. Um, he's pretty good at his instructions. Hack tips are pretty good, or Shannon, she does a pretty good job explaining things pretty basically. Tons and tons of people are showing you how to do this stuff that I'm showing you how to do. You don't even need me. <laughs> you, you got YouTube. You don't need me. Shows you all this stuff, right? So YouTube, there's tons of help out there for you, okay? 
if this is too impersonal for you, guess what? There's tons of things. There's the, the um, Omaha Linux users group. There's a group that meets once a month and they talk Linuxy things. Um, during COVID, they have been meeting um, online, I think, through Zoom or something like that. But they meet once a month at a certain place. You can sign up for their mailing list, which is sometimes nice. These are people in Omaha that you may want to get to know. Why? Because they're currently working in the IT field. Hmm, how can that help me get a job eventually? I'll get to know some of these guys that are working at certain businesses in the IT industry. Yeah, they're all pretty, pretty decent guys. That's how I've met several people when I first moved here to the area. Um, and if you're shy and don't want to go to meetings or show up, you can just do the mailing list. And it's not a heavy mailing list. You put in your email address and you sign up for it and people will answer questions. They'll put job posts out there like, hey, my company's hiring if you know Linux. Great. You know, hey, I remember I talked to you at that one meeting. I thought, you know, whatever. Um, people do that. I bought a server. Some guy was selling a server that he got from his work. Like he had 10 of them. He was selling them for 150 bucks or something like that. These Dell um, Edge servers. And I, I bought one, you know, it had like two terabyte, two or three terabytes, had like 96 gigs of RAM on it. It was, you know, amazing. That's what I'm, this is the server right here that I'm using for that. Um, you know, so they start selling stuff and they give it to you guys first. And um, anyway, this is a way you can ask them questions if you want live questions on talking to them. Linux people, like they like people asking you questions about Linux. I love questions about Linux, like the questions you guys were asking just in general about Linux. I could talk about it forever and ever, um, as you see with my long answers and stuff like that. Um, so if you need help, or you're looking for Linux things, or you're trying to set up something in Linux, these guys will like trip over themselves to help you. And you get to know people in the local area who are in the IT industry, right? And um, once they get to know you, even if it's through the internet or through whatever else, I mean, that's the number one way people get jobs is through knowing somebody. And it's not like you have to be best buddies with them or anything like that, but they know you. They go, all right, I've talked to this guy a few times. He seems cool. I'd like to work with him. Yeah, sure. You know, that's all it takes for them to say that to their boss and the boss be, all right, yeah, all right, I'll give him a shot then or whatever else, you know? Um, so anyway, the I know their website kind of sucks. It's pretty basic. But um, anyway, go ahead and look look through this. This has some information here as well. And uh, see, they're talking about Wi-Fi 6. That was their November presentation. Anyway, they talk about Linuxy type of stuff. All right. The last um, thing I'm going to show you is IRC. Does anyone ever use, know what IRC is? Anyone ever use IRC? Old school chat room <laughs> is kind of what it is, right? Um, so there are different programs that you can use to get into these IRC chat rooms. They're just called IRC, Internet Relay Chat. That's what it's called. Um, but basically, it's just a chat room, right? Um, they have multiple programs that can do it. Let's see, Linux IRC clients. Oh, there's WeChat, Pigeon, XChat. Anyway, I don't have any of the GUI ones installed, but you can kind of look at them here, I guess. They'll show you a picture. Um, that's WeChat. There we go. So this is XChat. You log in. They're on the Ubuntu chat support quorum. So if you have Ubuntu, if you have Fedora, you have Linux Mint, uh, whichever version of Linux you have, they usually have an IRC channel. You can see over here on the right, everybody who's logged into the chat room, there's 1,871. These, like if you want to talk to the person who actually designed or created or programmed or wrote the book on the program or Linux that you're using or or people who use it day in and day out, this is the place to go. These are like the experts at it, right? I mean, um, Mark Shuttleworth, the guy who owns the Ubuntu Canonical, which is the company that makes Ubuntu, he's been on IRC. You can talk to the CEO you know, of the company that has does that. Um, Red Hat and Fedora have their own channels that you can connect and get on and everything else and just chat with people 
right? Um, yeah, here's another one, hex chat. You just pick, you pick the program, just like you pick your browser, Firefox, Chrome, whatever else. You pick your IRC program and you can connect to the same channels. It just depends on which program you like. I'm gonna show you IRSS Arisi, which looks like this. It's a command line one, because I like command line. Show you what it looks like. And then you can connect to a service. Usually it's IRC free node seems to be what most of them are on. I think it's .org. Yeah. And then I can join and they're always pound. Linux Mint is a nice one. Like I say, these chat rooms are kind of like forums online. You know, you go to some forums and for online forums aren't always known to be the most friendly places. Oh, I connected to the wrong one. It's, it's .net. Yeah, we'll do that. I think, and then join Linux Mint. Oh, okay, come on. It's .com. Oh, let me see. All right, it's been a while obviously since I've used this. No. There I go. Now I'm in Linux Mint. And Linux Mint is pretty friendly. Um, Ubuntu is pretty friendly. Um, and you can see I'm I'm right here. But these are all the users. And you'll see people coming in and out of the channels. And you can have live instant help from the experts, right? And they have channels for everything, for like every specific program that's out there. Like if you use OpenOffice or if you use VLC to listen or watch movies or stuff or Putty or um, for games. I know there's one for Steam. There's, you know, there is um, whatever you can think of. There are these chat rooms right? That you can go in and chat and whatever else you want to do. Okay. So hopefully you've seen that there are just tons and tons of places to be able to get help from people um, directly or indirectly online. Um, so you are not left alone. You have tons of resources to help you with your Linux journey. That's how I learned Linux was just online asking people every city I've lived in. I've joined the mailing list. At least I've, I can count on one hand, the number of Linux meetings I've actually gone to in the last 20 years. Um, but I've, I've signed up for the mailing groups and sometimes I've had questions like, man, I'm really stuck on this. Boom. I get an answer right back. And these guys are professionals, right? So, so, so I have a, I have a question. Will, yeah. will we still be able to to join these kinds of like chat uh, these chat rooms even if we run a Windows? Uh, Absolutely. System? Yeah. So you just have to find an IRC client for Windows, which there are tons too. Um, yeah. So I did I did a search for Linux ones, but there are. I don't know which ones they are because I don't. Windows IRC clients. Oh, 15 best IRC clients for Windows. There you go. And here's a list of them. I guess Hex Chat, that runs on Linux and Windows because I saw that one listed there. Oh, okay. That was going to be like my next question. I was going to say, are there any kind of like dual platforms that like can run both Linux and the Windows so you guys can kind of communicate? There should be. Yeah. Them. I mean, here it says Arisi. So I don't know. You have to look. Maybe these are just um, popular IRC chats, but um, there are. I mean, just like just like Firefox runs on Linux and on Windows, Chrome runs on Linux and Windows, you know. So there, there, there are definitely some crossover ones that run on both. And some people like to have that comfort, right? Um, I'm used to this, so I also want to use it on Linux. And so, yeah, find one that works on both if you want. Whichever one you want, but there's dozens of them out there. Just pick whichever one looks the best to you and try them out and connect. Um, you have to find out what the hashtag is for it and like what network they're on. Like I went to the free node network um, and that's where most of them are, are those free, that free node.net network. Um, and then usually it's just the hashtag and the name of whatever you're connected, like hashtag Ubuntu, hashtag Linux Mint, hashtag Fedora. Um, but you can always go to their websites and search for it, for instance, you can do um, Ubuntu IRC 
channel or something like that. And you should be able to find it. Yeah. So Ubuntu's wiki on IRC channel. And um, and they show you how to connect. Yeah. So here they have all, oh, look at, see, they have multiple ones for different desktop environments. So they have K-Ubuntu for the KDE desktop, X-Ubuntu if you're using XFCE, you know, anyway. Um, channels for discussion. So they have all sorts of, these are all of them, right? And I think you could probably just, if you had the client installed, I think sometimes you click on it and then it opens up your program that you have, since I have a, um, an on uh, a command line program, it doesn't go right to it. But if you have like X chat on or something like that, it'll just open up X chat right to that channel. So play around with it. Oh, see here it is IRC free node server. Yeah. So it gives you information on how to connect to it. You just have to just have to find it. Good question, guys. All right. So that's how you get help in Linux. All right. Don't feel lost. Don't feel you know, crazy, confused, all that kind of stuff, right? All right, way too much time on that. So, because we got to a few other things. So I'm gonna do the RM command really quick. Um, I think you guys know copy and paste or copy, move, LS, things like that. Um, I was just gonna go over, and you guys are probably already familiar with it anyways, the whole thing with directories and the RM command. So if I'm in the temp folder here, let me see, I think I need to go right here, I'm in the temp folder. All right, um, so if I have this and I want to delete a file, I can just do rm file one and it just works. File one, boop, non-existent anymore, right? If I do rm play, I usually get this error. Oh, it's a directory. RM doesn't work. Yeah, as someone said there in the chat, I can do IRM, uh, DIR play, and that works. So it's remove directory. And remember, this is a path. I'm using a relative path because it's just right here in my location, right? If it's somewhere else on the system, you put the full path or whatever you want to um, do that. Now, this still may not work. Let's see. Okay, good. We have our right, copy. Good thing we backed up file one. Phew. I want to back up with that blank file. All right now, let's see if I can do rmdir school. Oh, it's not letting me remove it because there's stuff in it. And this is kind of a safety feature built in. They they just want you to make sure that you're not deleting anything unnecessary that you know you shouldn't be deleting, right? Um, because you have this file in there, but I'm just like, yeah, I'm sure I want it deleted. So I just hit the up arrow. You guys know that you can hit the up arrow and it repeats the command you just did before. I'm not really that fast of a typer. And if I hit up again, it scrolls through the commands. If I hit up again, it will do this, watch. See? And then if I hit the down arrow, it scrolls through the commands I typed. And that way I can modify them, right? I think it's a R, capital R. Let's see, I always forget. Nope, doesn't know what that is. I don't have to do the RF, probably. I don't know. I only know the RF. That doesn't do it either. What is it? I have to look up the manual. Or you can also do help. I forgot to show you guys that too. Both ignore. Let's see, look at this. I do it. A, I I delete folders a different way, which is probably the incorrect way, but it's effective. All right, it's not going to let me delete it, so I'm going to show you the way I do it. <laughs> I just use the rm command, but you got to be careful. Our told us to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, and then I, I do um, capital RF for force, but you have to be careful with this because this will delete anything, anything, if you use the capital R and then force, which is you're just forcing it to do it no matter what. And then it actually deletes it and then it's closed. So anyway, that's how you delete a directory. 
um, just be aware of that. And like I said, um, I'm just using relative paths, but realize that you can delete anything from anywhere on your system if you put the whole path there. All right. That's all I want to show you for that. Um,